Also, who gives a sh about disinformation? Sort out getting baby food. Get the baby food sorted and then move on to disinformation. We got two problems. One, babies are starving. Two, people are saying all sorts of crazy stuff that I disagree with on the internet. Well, let's prioritize that. What's that noise? I don't know. Hopefully it's not someone doing some disinformation. Come on. No shortage, it's just disinformation. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Courting. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, I've been watching more and more of uh, Russell Brand here on YouTube. He's uh, being, he's being uh, categorized kind of as the uh, UK's version of Joe Rogan because they share the same kind of opinions on a lot of things. I would say that, you know, Brand is clearly, you know, a left-wing personality. Um, but he asks the right questions and he brings up very interesting topics or points that, you know, people just, uh, you know, they aren't allowed to talk about. I, I just, I don't, I, I don't understand why, but it's just true. I mean, um, when we have to look at our, you know, U.S. military having to airlift baby formula to this country from Europe, there has been... Is there a word bigger than catastrophic? There has been a monumental failure in the system. And then you have these idiots like Hassan saying, uh, oh, it's uh, capitalism's why there's no baby food. Um, no, moron. Um, there's uh, our own government uh, has prohibited the importation of baby formula from places like the European Union even though they have similar or even higher standards. Why? Don't know. That doesn't sound like capitalism to me. It sounds more like communism to me. Uh, but you have Russell Brand uh, saying, watch Russell Brand slams Joe Biden for focusing on, quote, disinformation while American babies starve. Like, I, I don't know. I, I obviously, I don't have a child. I don't know what it's like where you are. But people have told me that, you know, this baby formula thing isn't like a brand new thing. And it's been kind of tough to get for some amount of time. We've only now reached like critical mass where, you know, you have like literal fights breaking out in target aisles over the last package of it. You have people um, price gouging on it, selling the stuff on um, like uh, uh, Craigslist and, and Facebook at absorbent prices because they're, wherever there's an opportunity to make money, humans will try. He writes, or he says in the video, who, get, who gives an S about disinformation, Brand said. Later adding, get the baby food sorted, then move on to that. We've got two problems, he begins. One, babies are starving. Two, people are saying all sorts of crazy stuff that I disagree with on the internet. After choosing to prioritize disinformation, Brand mimics a baby crying, followed by asking, what's that noise? He responds to his question, I don't know. Hopefully it's not someone doing some disinformation, though. Brandon continued on to note to push back, I'm sorry, note the pushback that podcaster Joe Rogan received this winter, adding that the government was, quote, warming the public up to the idea of misinformation. They absolutely were. And, and, and we saw this when they literally launched a disinformation console, uh, which only disbanded after immense backlash from the American public. They was warming us up, weren't they, for it? They were getting us ready. There were always a lot of misinformation. That's what all that Joe Rogan stuff was. They were getting you and me ready for, there's this thing, misinformation. He's 100% right. 100% right. But they sort of misjudged it, didn't they? Because actually, it turns out people really like Joe Rogan. And generally speaking, even if you don't like Joe Rogan, people like hearing diverse opinions is so curious and hypocritical and empty and shallow because if what you're saying you're interested in is diversity and helping people of all descriptions and religions and races i mean and that's a project i'm really really on board with you can't achieve that without open communication you can't force people down that you can't go look, get down there into freedom he's absolutely right freedom doesn't feel like that freedom is messy. People uh, uh, hit each other in the ribs by mistake with their elbows 
tread on, tread on each other's toes, misspeak, mispronounce, missay stuff all the time, but misinformation and misinformation boards are not the solution to that problem. Open communication, trust, faith, meaningful community, jobs that mean something to you, relationships that mean something to you. When people feel more fulfilled and connected, we might communicate with each other a little better. This is a kind of a core tenet of what Brand talks about. I, I, I would subscribe to that idea. The fact that it's objective is of not hurting one another is a beautiful objective, but why should would we hurt each other if we can avoid it? But I simply do not trust that that has ever been the objective of the United States government. It doesn't make sense when you look back, when you look at the behavior. Brand continued on to note, Tyranny is occurring now through bureaucracy, tenocracy, and other means. Tyranny looks like what is happening now. That's what tyranny is. The tyranny of tenocracy, bureaucratic language, and a sort of nimble toe through linguistics that I can't see how that helps anybody. Reducing ordinary people's freedoms, facilitating more and more corporate power, giving more regulatory authority to the government. This is not the pathway we should be walking along together, he said. The Biden administration, quote, paused this controversial plan to create the disinformation board, causing would-be leader Nina Jankowitz to resign. On baby formula, though, Biden signed an Access to Baby Formula Act in 2000. Can you believe it's too, how embarrassing for my country? How embarrassing for the United States? Like, we don't have baby food we're worried about sending another 500 billion dollars to ukraine we don't have baby food are you kidding me which allows greater access to baby formula production and lifts restriction on the industry to spur production another 70,000 pounds of formula i think that that's written to make it sound like a lot but that doesn't seem like a lot it seems like a day's worth for the amount of babies that already need it. I don't know. I guess I don't know how much formula gets consumed, but it doesn't seem like much. It's destined for pharmacies and, pharmacies and healthcare facilities such as hospitals, clinics, and doctor's offices exclusively as a part of the administration's $28 million initiative to fight the shortage. $28 million? Is that all you had left after sending $50 billion to your proxy war? Like that's all, Is that all you had left? I mean, the whole ba- this is embarrassing that you have our the United States military having to procure baby formula. Like, I can't I can't emphasize that fact enough. The Biden administration, which has struggled to address a nationwide shortage of formula, particularly hypoallergenic vi- varieties, have dubbed the effort Operation Fly Formula. The crisis follows the closure of the nation's largest domestic manufacturing plant in Michigan in February due to safety concerns. But I've also read reports that that place has fixed whatever issues that it had. And the, the, like the, the FDA is not reopening it. The White House had 132 pallets of Nestle Health Science Alphamino Infant and Alphamino Junior were set to leave Rammstein Air Base in Germany for the U.S. for an additional 114 pallets of Gerber Good Start were on the way. About 1.5 million 8-ounce bottles of the three formulas, which are hypoallergenic for children with cow's milk protein allergy, are expected to arrive this week. Okay, 1.5 million treatments. Okay, our treatments. Uh, 8-ounce bottles. I don't know how many times a day babies drink 8 ounces. Probably three. I don't know. How many times you feed a baby? I don't have any. Uh, but... You know, this has been, by the way, a long-term issue. You see, longer term, you said the U.S. needs more formula providers so that no individual company has this much control over supply chains. Well, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the government should just keep their, their grubby little fingers out of it entirely. You know, if we had been able to import formula from other countries, guess what that would have done? That would have forced the ones here in the United States to be better, wouldn't it? If people are going to Europe or other nations to buy their products, then they're not buying them from here in uh, the domestic factories. It could have, like the problem could have resolved itself in some ways. But like, that's, I mean, that's how capitalism works. Under Operation Fly Formula, the Department of Agriculture and Department of Health Human Services are authorized to request 
the DOD to pick up overseas infant formula that meets U.S. health and safety standards so we can get to store shelves faster. I, I don't even understand how this happened. Uh, you know, and I'm happy to see people like Russell Brand, you know, just b building up a, a great following. Uh, and if you're new to my channel, by the way, there's a red subscribe button down below. If you can, uh, please give that a click. I'd love to have you join uh, the, the family here. It makes finding my videos easier. And it lets YouTube know that, uh, well, at least somebody's interested. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.